Welcome back everybody. It is October the 20th, 2020. And it's New Guitar Day. That's actually a new used guitar. This came all the way from a place called, and I believe I'm pronouncing it right, I don't think you can get it wrong, Katy, Texas. I think it's a suburb of Houston. This is a little Gretsch Junior Jet. I think its model number is G2210. I could be wrong. Anyways, we just wanted to invite our assistant in. And we're going to proceed with opening up and taking a look at the new guitar. And you'll notice the kitty has disappeared. As often the case, used guitars from Guitar Center come in a ton of bubble wrap, so we're going to save the bubble wrap unpacking and just come back when we've got it unpacked. Okay, so we're back. Has been my experience with Guitar Center. Thus far, they do a really, really good job when they pack their guitars. Uh, lots of bubble wrap. No apparent damage to the guitar. There is an issue and We'll see if we can solve that issue. I'm going to zoom right in here. But the, I don't know what you call it, the retaining ring, the bolt, whatever it's called, is missing from the output jack. There's a tiny, you can't really see it. I'll take a picture of it. There's a tiny blemish right here. But you can't feel it, so it must just be a finished blemish. Otherwise, the guitar looks fantastic. Uh, I don't think that this guitar was cleaned very well. It's not filthy, but it doesn't look like it was polished. The strings do not look like they're new. It's just an uneducated guess on my part. I'm going to tune it up and see what happens. Um, I'm also going to take a picture of the missing bolt on the input jack or the output jack. Uh, one interesting thing, this is my third Gretsch. And all Indian laurel is not equal. <coughs> For some reason on the Squires, the Indian laurel just looks really cheesy really blotchy on this guitar it actually looks really nice it looks very rosewoody these also don't look like they're the original knobs look like whoever owned it before me upgraded and put some metal knobs on it so I'm going to tune it up and plug it in and come back and give you my my impression Okay, so we're back for the conclusion of our new guitar day. Again, I believe the full name of this guitar is a Gretsch G2210 Junior Jet Streamliner. There's a mouthful. Uh, here's my first impressions of the guitar. Again, I got this from Guitar Center in Katy, Texas. Other than the nut missing from the jack, uh, which is always a disappointment. We'll solve that problem here. Um, the guitar is in great condition, which they said it was, which is always appreciated. As I mentioned earlier, the Indian Laurel fretboard on Gretsch's seems to be a higher quality than what they put on the Squires, at least visually. Squire feels good, this feels good, but this looks darker and richer, looks more like a rosewood. So I give it extra points for that. The fit and the finish on this guitar are very nice. The ends of the frets are very smooth and well finished. It has a black binding on the fretboard. Um, and I guess Gretsch calls these thumbnail markers, which are sort of unique to Gretsch guitars. So that's sort of a nice feature. Whoever owned this guitar briefly changed the switch tip and the knobs from the dark plastic to just some generic chrome ones, which is, you know, upgrade. It's all a matter of taste. 
What I like about this guitar and the reason why I bought it specifically is just the simplicity that it has a wraparound tailpiece. It's intonated quite well. Very simple, basic tortoise pick guard, imitation tortoise. The tuners work very well. A couple people did videos on this guitar and thought the first thing they wanted to do was change the tuners. These hold the tune fine. They work smoothly. Uh, I don't know if anyone did any work on the nut, but the nut has no binding issues at all. No pinging. And again, it feels and it plays nice. Again, it's $300 street price, so it's competing with the the, uh, you know, higher than an affinity square. I think the next level up now, they commodulated everything into the classic vibe so there's no more standard, deluxe, or vintage modified. This would easily hold its own with a vintage modified. It would be a little, you know, equal to a standard or a deluxe and a little higher quality than, than a standard in the square. Um, since Fender has their hand in this, that's why I make the direct comparison. And I did read an article that the Junior Jet was the first, considered the first Les Paul copy. Obviously a Les Paul Junior because it has no binding. And it's just a slab body. But yeah, back in the 50s, Gretsch saw the shape of the Les Paul and came out with this. So that's its sort of claim to fame. Um, I can't say that I love the gold finish. But it's nice, it's subdued, it's called gold dust, so it's not like an in-your-face kind of gold, it's a very soft gold, and it sort of channels Elvis's uh, gold lame jacket back in the 50s, a little fancy for my taste, but I don't really worry about the cosmetics, and uh, I guess these are Broadtron pickups, Gretsch purified affectionados would consider them to be junk pickups that they have nothing to do with Gretsch at all. They're just an over-glorified humbucker. Such details do not affect me at all. To me, they're a decent sounding budget humbucker. Um, apparently, there's a trick. If you want them to be a little airier, you can take some of these pole pieces out. I doubt that I'll ever go that route because, again, I'm not much of a modifier. I just buy things to enjoy them as they are. And if I don't enjoy them as they are, I pass them on. So there you go. October the 20th, 2020. 10 20 2020. I won't even say the name again, but it is a Gretsch Streamliner. This is their least expensive guitar. And again, to a Gretsch purist, this wouldn't even really be a real Gretsch. This would just be considered an imitation, but it does say Gretsch on the headstock, and so to me it's a real Gretsch. So if you're looking for a budget guitar, nice feel. I'm going to weigh it right now. I'll be right back with the weight. I'm going to guess it comes in at about 7.5 pounds, so it's not super light, certainly not super heavy. It's a nice solid weight. I'll be right back. So according to my very unofficial and probably not accurate scale, it comes in at 8 pounds, 8.2 pounds, which is, you know, it's a good solid guitar. That's about, you know, the ones on Sweetwater were showing it being about 7.12, because they break their scale down more. Mine only goes up to 0.10. So yeah, 8 plus pounds for a, you know, a slab body made out of NATO, which is supposedly a cousin to mahogany. Which again, wood is wood, and it's wood, and I like it, and I got a good price for it, and it fulfills my need to have a Gretsch guitar at the bottom of the spectrum. So thank you once again for joining us for New Guitar Day, New Gretsch. <laughs>